So today we're going to be looking at how we can make Renko charts in Python with a module called MPL Finance. So a Renko chart, if you don't know, is another kind of Japanese candlestick chart where we have each block here representing a specific price movement. The green ones represent upwards movement, red ones represent downwards movement. And so every time the price moves by a specific amount, one of these blocks is going to get put in place. So it looks here that each block represents roughly $100, $200, something like that. We can edit that as a parameter later on, and I'll show you how to do that. And the reason why people like Renko charts is that they offer a clearer view of trends than something like a traditional open, high, low, close candlestick chart where things can get a bit messy and you might not know what's going on. And you can increase and decrease the size of these bars respectively to get a better idea of maybe longer term time frames. You know, you could set the value of this to be like $1,000. So it would only plot one bar every $1,000 of movement and you get a better idea of what's going on. So let's dig into this and how we can actually build something like this. So the first thing we're going to need is the MPL finance module. You can find it on here at GitHub. So if you go down to here, pip install upgrade MPL finance, you'll want to run that command to install it with pip. Lots of tutorials here, but obviously we're just going to be going through this ourselves. The next thing that we'll need is a source of data. So you can use CSVs or Quandl or you know, any sort of data source that you have. You can use a REST API from Polygon, many different things. But I'm just going to be using the Yahoo Finance API because that's the easiest to use and it's free and easily available in Python. So for that, you're going to want to install the module Y Finance up here. So Y Finance, again with pip. So I think that's pretty much everything that we need here. You'll also want pandas, but I'm assuming you probably have that installed. So let's get started. So we'll make a file called tutorial.py and we'll go ahead and do our imports. So we'll import MPL finance as MPL. We'll import pandas as PD and we'll import Y finance as YF. So our first step obviously is to gather some data. Now I'm going to use the BTC USD price. So I'm just going to call my data frame over here, BTC. And in order to get the price, you basically just have to go to the Yahoo Finance website here. You can search for any symbol you want. So you can see Tesla is trending here. And essentially whatever it's called within these brackets here, that's the value that you want to use for the symbol. So you can see that for cryptocurrencies like BTC, or if I were to look at say ETH, USD, they're all given as the crypto fiat pair rather than just the crypto. So just do bear that man when you grabbing crypto data. So I'm gonna use BTC USD here and we'll do yf.ticker and then you just put in the ticker name and then we're gonna to wanna to get some historical data here. So you can do history. And then in order to get our parameters, we can have a look at the Yahoo Finance API here. Now this is for yf.download, but the same thing works for yf.history. You know, in terms of the period and the interval here, these are the options that we have available to us. So period is gonna be the total data that we bring back. So if I select 10 years here, it's going to try and pull 10 years of Bitcoin price data from the database. It might not manage to do that. If we go to max here, we can see that there are only seven or eight years of price data here. So it's not gonna to manage to pull the full 10 years, but it will try at least. And then the interval here is gonna be the length of the bar that you bring in. By default, it goes to one day. If you try and request intraday data, so that is, you know, the one minute, the 10 minute, the 20 minute, it won't let you request more than 60 days worth of that data. So just do bear that in mind. If you're looking for shorter time frames, you might have to go somewhere else. So, okay, we've got our interval and our period. Those are the main things that we need here. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to use the last month's worth of data. So I'm going to say period is equal to one month. And then I'll say interval 
is equal to, um, we'll take like the 60 minute chart. I believe that was an option over here, 60 minute. So we'll take hourly candles for the last month. So that should give us everything we need. We can go ahead and print that out and see what we get. Now, the great thing about using Y Finance with MPL Finance is that it gives us the columns in the exact format that we need. We have a date time index and we have open, high, low, close labeled correctly. So we can just plug this straight into MPL Finance. So we can go ahead and do that. So if you do MPL, my muscle memory kicked in there and I type PLT for my plot lib. But instead we want MPL.plot and then BTC is our data source. And then we want to specify the type here. So obviously we want a Renko chart. And then that's pretty much it. We can save there and run that. And we get a very simple Renko chart. Now there's obviously some styling that we can do here to make this look a little bit nicer, but you've got all the normal features that you would have in matplotlib, given that MPL Finance is basically a wrapper around matplotlib. That's why this is such a familiar interface. So let's have a look at some customization options here that we can make to this chart. The first thing that we might want to do is we might want to plot, say, the volume. So that's pretty easy to do, but we can just go over here. I'll just sort out this formatting and then we can say volume is equal to true. And it will then attempt to plot the volume alongside the Renko chart. So you can do that if you want or not, that's up to you. Another thing that you might want to do is you might want to change the styling. So you remember in the graph I showed at the beginning, we had green for upticks and red for downticks, whereas on the default style, it's black and white. So if you wanna change that, you can change the style here to Yahoo, as in the Yahoo Finance theme, and it'll turn green and red. If you want to know which styles are available for the chart so that you can change the colors as you want, so we have green and red rather than black and white, you can go to this page here on the documentation in the styles section, and you can either run this command here and this will give you the available ones, or you can just have a look through here and see which ones you like. So you can see that the Yahoo one looks like this. You can see we have a Binance option here, so it'll look like the Binance chart does. So we could try that one out. It's very similar to the Yahoo Finance one, but you can see it looks more like the Binance chart would. So the next thing that you might want to do is to change the actual parameters of the Renko chart itself. Now, this was a journey in itself to find how you edit these, but if you look into the code somewhat, you'll find this function here, which validates the arguments. And I assume there's one of these for each type of graph that you try and plot. But we see that there are two keywords here that we can choose. We can choose the brick size, which by default is set to the ATR. Now ATR stands for average true range. It's just a technical indicator that is essentially a measure of volatility. So the, the more a stock moves or a, a asset moves in price, the larger the average true range, which makes sense, right? If the asset's moving a lot, we want to set our brick size to be larger to compensate for that. So say if it's more expensive, we don't want tiny bricks. And then we also have the average true range length here, which is just the length of that indicator, much like you would suggest the length of an RSI, something like that. Obviously, if you change the brick size here, then this doesn't really matter. You know, if you change the brick size to be some constant value like 100 or 1000, then the average true range length doesn't matter too much. So how do you actually implement these? Well, again, you have to dig around in the code a little bit to find where you implement them. But in the tests here, you can see you've got Renko params. So that is the argument and that's how you pass them in. So let's do that. So we want to start and have a new parameter here and we'll call that Renko params. 
and you want this to be a dictionary so we can do something like this or you know we could actually specify them as key value pairs doesn't really matter too much so we're going to say dict and then we can say average true range length let's say we can just set this to be like 50 and we should notice some kind of change maybe on the chart nope so let's maybe increase this to like 100 well, one has to assume that this is doing something behind the scenes. Uh, it's just not particularly visible. We can change the brick size though, and that's going to be immediately noticeable. We can set this to like a thousand, or a hundred even, set it to a thousand. So you obviously we have very few bricks here. They're all intervals of a thousand. So each brick represents upwards or downwards movement of a thousand. We can obviously see that October has been pretty nice just in terms of this trend. You could even go more crazy and set this to be 2000. Just, and then <laughs> essentially the price of Bitcoin is uh, just upwards up and to the right from the beginning of October here. You can obviously make this smaller if you wanted to. You can put this down to 100 and just, you know, see what happens and how you like to visualize these kinds of charts. There's a fair amount of other stuff that you can do in this module apart from just doing Renko charts. I know I've done another tutorial on this, but you can do something like open high, low close here, and that will just plot a regular open high, low close bar. So you can zoom in here. This plots the sort of line variant here, I believe if we do candle. it will actually plot the regular open high, low, close candles that we're used to seeing here. So there's a lot you can do in this module. It'll pretty much sort you out for any kind of finance plotting that you look to do. That is ultimately what the module is looking to be. It's looking to be a finance wrapper around Matplotlib for all your financial charting needs. 